Kia ora, folks. Our next topic is going to be tangent lines. Here we can see a function. It's a moderately complicated function. We've got x times sine of x squared plus 1. Uh, but why I'm showing you this is because it's tracing out a tangent line. And so as the function progresses, sort of in this left to right manner here, the tangent line is following it. And then so we've got some green ones, a black one, and a red one. Down here it should switch to black as that tangent line goes horizontal and then the green ones indicate that it's a positive slope and then we'll have a black one up here and then some red ones coming around. So a tangent line, well, it's just a straight line that touches a curve at exactly one point or a single point. So tangent comes from tangentum, which means to touch. So if you have a line that's touching a curve at only one point, then it has to be a tangent line. Okay, so where does tangent come from? Let's just take a quick detour because we also are familiar with y equals tangent of theta uh, as a trig function. So let's just sketch out here where tangent comes from. So I'm going to draw a unit circle and on my circle, so I've got my axis here and I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to say that the radius is equal to 1. So I'm going to say this is my radius equals 1. And if this is a unit circle, then this point on the x-axis is 1, 0. By definition, we always start at positive x and work canter or anti-clockwise. So my angle theta goes from the x-axis up to the radius there. And here we can define our trig ratios. So I can say sine, cosine, and tangent using this. So let's have a look here. If I bring this down and make a 90 degree angle, then I've got sine, which is opposite the angle over the hypotenuse, which is my radius. And I've got cosine, which is adjacent over my hypotenuse. So what about tangent then? Well, tangent as a ratio is opposite over adjacent. So tangent should be this one here, opposite. Over this one here, adjacent. And that is fine if my radius is equal to one. Let's draw a different construction. I'm gonna draw a line here at x equals one. And this line is just going to touch that circle. So this is a tangent. And I've got my same angle theta. So let's extend the radius up here. So I've got my same angle theta, and now let's use my adjacent. So I'm gonna erase this adjacent. Say so let's have it be this whole distance here. And I know that that distance now is one. Okay, so now tangent equals opposite, and the adjacent is just one. So this gives me a new way to write tangent as just the opposite. And that means that tangent of theta here equals this point on the y-axis. So if I bring that one across, this point here is tan of theta. And using my unit circle, we constructed it just from having this tangent line, just from having this tangent line touching 
at x equals 1. So if theta is 60 degrees, which is approximately how big I've drawn it as it is there. So tan 60 is 1.73. Well then, this point on my y-axis is 1.73. As, uh, as an approximation. So that was just a detour there to talk about tangent and try to tie it back in to the unit circle. It just means touching a curve. And of course, it can only touch a curve at one point. If I were to draw, if I were to pick a point here, there's my estimate of a tangent. If I missed, so if my tangent wasn't very good and it went like this, and I cut the curve sort of at these two points. Now, oops, I didn't want to do that. But if my tangent does not touch just that one point, say I miss it, say I try to sketch a tangent over here and I miss, I have two points of intersection. That line is now called a secant. Secant that cuts the curve. To come up with the equation for a tangent line, we're going to start with the formula for a slope. So the slope as a value m, given that we have two points, is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is given two points, this is the slope between them. So now let's take this term on the bottom here and cross multiply it or bring it through over here on the left. And so I will have now x2 minus x1 times the slope equals y2 minus y1. Okay, here let's change x2 and y2 to just be a general coordinate, a general point. So those will be my variables, x and y. So let x2 comma y2 be general, and that'll just be x and y. So x2 is replaced with x minus x1 times the slope equals y2 gets replaced with the y variable minus y1. And I'm just gonna do one more thing. Usually we start with the y on the left. So I'll rewrite this as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this is now the equation of a line given a slope m So we need to know, or we need to calculate what m is, and a point, just one point now, x1, comma, y1. So rather than using two points to begin with, we just need one point and one slope. So this is now the equation general form for the equation of a line, and we're going to use it to calculate the equation of a tangent line. Find the equation of the tangent. So here is my curve. So that's my parabola that I'm looking at here, and I'm given a point at x equals 2. Now we have to be given a point. You need to know where to start. The slope changes at every single point depending on where you are, so we need that starting point. So what I can do is just do a quick estimate on my graph here. At x equals 2, come up to the curve and sketch a tangent line. So it looks something like this, only touching that curve at one point. All right, how do we find out exactly what the equation of that line is? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my equation of a tangent line, then I'm going to find the slope and find that point. So my equation says y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. 
So I need a slope and I need a point. I have the x coordinate here as x equals two, but I need the y coordinate. So I have some work to do off to the side here. So maybe I'll just split my page and I'll say find the point. So I have the graph here. What I need to do is find the y value at x equals two. So what I'm gonna do is sub in and find f at two. So this equals two squared minus two times two plus one. So four minus four plus one equals one. So my coordinate now is two comma one. And just looking at my graph, that looks exactly what I'm expecting here. This point is two comma one. Okay, my next point is to find the slope. Well, how do we do that? How do we find the slope? Well, the slope is the gradient or the derivative. So to find the slope, what I want to do is find the derivative at this point. So slope is the same thing as the derivative just at x equals 2. So using my power rule, I'll find y prime equals 2x minus 2. And now that's the entire slope function, so I need to sub in my point. So I just want the green line that I sketched there. I don't want the whole entire derivative. If we look at this as a whole entire function, that's a straight line with a slope of 2. Well, I need an actual value. I just need to sub in x equals 2 now. So next part sub in x equals 2 and I get y prime equals 2 times 2 minus 2 so that slope is 2 so the rise over run of my green line and if I sketched it well it should be approximately correct so I go up 2 and over 1 up 2 and over 1 and so on. Alright so now I've got my uh, my ingredients to sub into my formula. So go back to the equation of a line. Now x and y are general, so we will not be changing these or subbing in anything for these, right? Equation of a line says y equals something x plus something, so I leave those the same. My y1 is what I found just over here, so that's y minus one equals my slope, which is two times x minus my point, which is also 2. And maybe I'll just highlight what came from where. And I'll just highlight that this x equals 2 goes in there. And my derivative, or my slope, goes in here. So I can simplify this. I will expand the brackets. So y minus 1 equals 2x minus 4. And then I will move 1 to the other side. So y equals 2x minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. And so this is now the equation of my tangent line. Maybe I'll highlight it in green, like so. And so this is now the equation of my tangent line. So there's quite a few different pieces to put together in order to find the equation of a tangent. Another example for us here. So let's just write out some steps here. So first of all, find the point, the point of interest, which is where you are going to find that tangent line. Secondly, we need to know the slope of the tangent, which is going to be f prime. And then third, we sub into the equation of a straight line. So first of all, let's find our point. I'm given my x value here, x equals minus one. So I need to find f at minus one. So this will be minus 1 to the power 5 
minus two times minus one cubed plus three. So when you have negative to an odd exponent, well, that's going to stay negative. If it goes to an even exponent, then it becomes positive. So this will be minus one, minus two times minus one, which stays negative. It's going to be come positive two and then plus three. So minus one plus two plus three should be positive four. So my point then x comma y and actually this is x one y one that I'll use in my formula is going to be minus one comma four. Okay, step two, let's go up here now. I need to find the derivative. So dy by dx, and I'll use the power rule. So this is five x to the fourth minus two times three, that was my exponent, and then subtract one is three x squared. The three is a constant term, so that derivative goes to zero. You don't have to write it in. If you do, it's a plus or minus zero. So I'll take that out. Uh, the next step is to find the slope at that point. So that's the entire slope function, but I just need the slope at minus one. So I need to sub in x equals minus one. So one way to write this using slightly different notation is a big vertical bar. So this says find the derivative and then you're evaluating at x equals minus one. And now I'm gonna sub in minus one to the four. Uh, this is minus six times minus one squared. And now we have even exponents. So this is going to make my minus one turn into positive one. So simplifying is now five and then we have minus six times positive one, so five minus six. So it looks like my slope at x equals minus one is minus one. Third step is to use my equation of a line. So y minus y one equals m times x minus x one, and I'll sub in my points. So y and x stay the same, those are my variables. y1 is four, x1 is minus one, and then the slope is also minus one. So y minus four equals minus one times x minus minus one. And so I will just simplify this a bit. This is minus x, and then I have plus one and a minus one, so that becomes minus one on the right, and then I'm going to add four to clear this four from the left. So this is plus three. Y equals minus x plus three. And remember this is only at the point, only at x equals minus one. Ooh. Tangent line is y equals minus x plus three only at this one point. We can have a look here using Desmos. So I've just graphed the original function. So this is a fifth degree function looks something like this in red. And then I have my point of interest here, minus one comma four, and I've graphed my tangent line to see if it looks tangent. So minus x plus three, I've graphed it, and it looks like it's tangent at that point. We've got some symmetry in this one, so it also looks like it's tangent at this point here, one comma two. An example here that's going to lead into our next topic. Find the equation of the tangent to y equals two x squared minus one. So first of all, let's find the slope. 
and we'll take the derivative dy by dx equals 4x, one minus one differentiates to zero, and then sub in the point. So that's the entire slope function. What is the slope just at x equals zero? Well, we sub in zero, and now it tells me that the slope is zero, okay? Now we're looking for the equation of a tangent line, so I need a point and a slope. So step two here, find the point. And I'm given x equals zero, so I need to find f at zero. So you sub in zero everywhere we have an x, and I get zero minus one. So f at zero equals minus one. So this means that the point is zero comma minus one. Step three, find the tangent line using the equation of a line. So y minus y one equals the slope times x minus x one. Y one is my point I just found to be negative one. So that's y minus negative one. The slope I have found right here to be zero. So that's going to go in for zero. And then zero times my other terms. Well, it's also x minus zero. But zero times anything is zero. So simplify my equation. Double negatives y plus one equals zero. And therefore y equals negative one. So my tangent line is just y equals negative one. Now let's just think about y equals negative one and we can do a quick sketch to verify. So y equals negative one, we'll pick a point. Here's negative one. And that just says that it's a flat line, right? It's a constant value. So the tangent line is exactly horizontal. And we can imagine some curve that's just touching that tangent line. 